It was my great-grandfather who started the first Aberdeen Angus herd with two other great agriculturists, Watson of Keeler and Macombe, and uh, my great-grandfather. And it was they who bred the Aberdeen Angus uh, together. And uh, they produced the first pedigree Aberdeen Angus in 1860. We obviously have quite a lot of records going back, late 1850s, early 1860s. And you've had the work of Watson and Macombe. Credit where credit's due, they had done a lot of the initial uh, codifying of the breed, I guess. Sir George Macpherson Grant took the breed and really went out and promoted it, showed um, various exhibitions globally, most important of which was the Paris show. Um, I think it was 1870, I'm not absolutely certain, but he did a lot of showing and uh, probably, as they say now, making a brand out of the Aberdeen Angus. So Sir George Macpherson Grant, my great-great-grandfather, can be applauded for both making the right choice of breed, but also then uh, taking the breed global. Australia, New Zealand, South America, America, Canada, and it all started from this little area in Scotland. Ballandalic was built in 1546, and it's been added on to, of course, in other times, as they always did. And my family have been there, there since. I think for me one of the challenges is to work out where we go in the future. Many businesses are, is a question of, well, well what do we want to do? You know, many options are open. Here we have those decades, generations of responsibility to keep the Angus going. My mother has a fine eye for cattle and she worked with David to, to make, make the decisions on the farm as to what we keep, what we don't keep uh, and where we want to go. The Angus cattle are the love of my life. Uh, I've been at Ballandalic, as I said, since I was five years old, and since then they've always been out all summer in the Kuhoch, or the cow's meadow. Um, and I used to go and talk to them most days. Uh, so I have a huge interest in the cattle. We had a wonderful cattleman for 48 years. Then there was a sort of moment that we didn't have uh, such good cattle. David Johnson came into our lives and his family and since then we have gone right up. Of course David Johnson has a wonderful eye uh, for cattle and he has made the Bandella herd over the last eight years. Uh, well, welcome, welcome to Ballandalloch. Um, it's uh, a lovely setting in the, in the heart of Speyside here. Um, we've, um, we like to think we've got a nice, a nice Angus herd, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great privilege actually to, to be in charge of the, the oldest Aberdeen Angus herd in the world and continuous existence. Why Angus? Oh well, the, um, I've, I've worked with two different herds of, of Aberdeen Angus cattle before. I worked with the Fairoaks herd in Inverness and the Cardona herd in, in Stirling and um, I've always found them very easy to work with, um, quite cattle, uh, very very easy fleshed, easy calving, um, which means a lot nowadays, there's not the same stuff about, so uh, the easier the cattle are to work with. We try and keep our cattle not too big an animal, um, we're sort of very conscious of what an Aberdeen is set out to be, um, we're like a, an animal that's grass fed, easy finished, easy fleshed, uh, easy calved. Uh, so one of the main things that we try and keep a lot of attention to is the head of the animal. Um, I like a nice Angus head and we normally think if you get the head right the rest of the animal will follow. Um, not everybody agrees with that, a lot of folks say the head ends up in the slaughterhouse floor but to us as a breeder it's breed character. The 
is, it is a great honour. You know, there's there's only one there's only one person can say that. In the field we're standing in now, you could probably say there's been Ab Abirangas cattle in this field since 1860, really, and uh, and hopefully I think they will be here for a long time to come too. Um, it's, it means it means a lot to the family themselves. So hopefully I I can keep up the work and keep the thing going for them. <laughs>